Well, the first thing is uh, to reiterate the Tory Ward. That game is going to be uh, important for us. Uh, he's was the epitome of what UAB basketball is. A local kid, wonderful family, big time player, and was involved with the game uh, up until the, the time of the crash. So it is important for our team to play well and represent uh, he and his family the best way we possibly can. The game will be a, a big time challenge. Georgia State has a, um, a very talented roster, some, some high major transfers. They play a matchup zone defense that I think our ability to uh, be efficient against that is going to be an important part of the game. And Bottom line is our attitude has to be in the right spot, that we're willing and able to uh, put the last two games behind us, learn from the mistakes we made, and try and take a step forward. Coach, can you take anything positive out of that trip? Um, yeah, I mean, we have more film to, to look at and improve upon. Uh, there were some things in the Virginia Tech game that I thought were positives. We didn't do a good job of taking the scouting report and applying it in the game. Now, Virginia Tech, is big, strong, athletic. Their guards are able to get to the rim. We knew the free throw line would be a big deal and the, and the rebounds would be. And those were the two def defining stats in the game. Offensively, I thought we improved in the Virginia Tech game. We were sharing the basketball more, making more instinctive plays, which was a big emphasis for us. Um, but overall, it's, uh, you know, we need to improve and then try and get better results as well. I know you, you made some changes in the first game down there. Was that Trying to sort of send a message, maybe. Do you feel like they that message was received? Yeah, we're trying to. We're going to continue to try and tinker with things. We may uh, we may change the lineup a little bit tomorrow as well. Um, I really don't look at. I don't think the team looks at it as hey, we got five starters and then five guys that just kind of come in and help out a little bit. And we think we're we are playing ten guys right now that all on given nights are are playing at a high level. We haven't had the majority of the team playing well on the same nights, and we've tend to have two or three guys play good games, but two or three guys aren't going to be good enough. And for us to be able to play at a high level and do things we're talking about, we need to have the majority of the team, the starters and the guys coming in off the bench, playing closer to their uh, potential. Coming into the season, obviously all the expectations because of last year, being more pressure, people, you know, you're not really catching anybody by surprise. Do you feel like that's played a part in it? Maybe the kids are putting too much pressure on themselves to live up to the expectation? You know, I think there's probably a lot of different factors going in right now. One is we've played some good teams. You know, we've lost to three uh, Power Five uh, teams that are very, very talented. Um, well, I do believe we do have some talent. That talent's going to be <laughs> null and void unless we uh, play extremely hard and, and are cohesive as a team. And those two things aren't where they need to be yet. And as those things improve, I think it'll um, help the talent, you know, mesh together and, and play closer to our potential. So I do think teams. Uh, you know, there is a target on our back. You know, people have talked about that, and I think there's some truth to that. The team, people are going to be excited to play us this year, and we're going to have to match enthusiasm, uh, match energy levels every game we get out there. The, look at the minutes for the last game. You had, I think, five guys play 28, and you had a couple play less than 10. Was that just a case of those five guys were playing a lot better than, and maybe other ones weren't playing as well because the minutes weren't quite as. Yeah, I think last game it was a, a big case of that. I thought certain guys were playing at a higher level. Um, Tosin rolled his ankle uh, a couple times now and was limping and uh, wasn't effective, so his minutes went down. Um, that made uh, Ha Ha and Chris's minutes certainly go up. I thought Nick was playing well, so he was getting more minutes. Hakeem, I thought, played well. RB was competing. So there were guys I thought were playing at a higher level, and, and then uh, matchup wise, I thought gave us the best opportunities. I think Tyler gave us some good minutes. And that'll be somewhat consistent throughout the year. But I also think we're going to start to, from a coaching staff and players and everybody, just get more of a flow and a feel for game in, game out, a little bit more consistency like that. I don't know that the men's will look exactly like what they were last game, but you'll probably see a little bit more of that. You think Tobin will play tomorrow? Uh, I don't know for sure yet. Um, I think he, uh, I think we're treating him aggressively, and we'll, we'll figure it out tomorrow how he's looking. How well did you know Tori? Uh, Fairly well, you know. I I would say I've had had a half dozen uh, conversations with him, um, you know, not in depth conversations, um, but or a couple in depth conversations, and then a lot of times out on the recruiting trail, more just hello. Um, couldn't have more respect for for him and kind of what he stood for, and his his level of respect nationally with coaches is very very high. Uh, after the tragedy happened, you'd go to all the recruiting events and um, you know there'd be an open seat in the recruiting right in the middle of all the coaches and a sign that says, you know, seat for Tory Ward and that kind of thing. So the level of respect you know, amongst his peers was very, very high as well.
question? Just when he died in that plane crash, how hard did it hit everybody? I guess maybe you and even how hard did it think it hit guys in the coaching profession? I think it hit everybody really hard. And it's, uh, you know, when, one of our core values in the program right now is appreciation. And I try and talk to <laughs> myself and everybody within our program that we always, today, appreciate what we have. You know, we just lost two games and think everything's miserable, but still appreciate what we have. And when tragic events like that happen, you know, you certainly appreciate everything and it kind of puts in your face a little bit that, hey, value the things around you. It did send shockwaves through the basketball community and through our, um, our basketball family as well. And it's, uh, you know, with, with him too, it's not just an individual, it's his entire family that are so close to UAB and so, such important members of the UAB community.